he was having some troubles in school and the teacher was concerned that he was ADHD. It was that kind of a hyperactivity, not focusing. Um, we tried some different dietary changes and things, behavioral changes. Um, didn't seem to help much and then I noticed he was staring, um, not really comprehending what I was saying. So I took him to his pediatrician, Janet Casey, and I said, you know, it just, he just didn't seem right to me. I couldn't really pinpoint a whole lot, but he just didn't seem right to me. And she was great. She, you know, she trusts us as parents and, and really sent us to Dr. Mink, concerned maybe that he was having some seizures. So uh, he had an EEG, which was fairly benign. Um, but when Dr. Mink saw him uh, and his nurse practitioner, they noticed some neurological tests that were a little bit off. Um, so he sent him for an MRI. He hadn't really told us anything at that point. Um, but he sent us for the MRI then. So all of this happened between, I think, June of 2005, and the MRI was in, I believe, August. Well, we found out um, over the phone, he called and told us the results of the MRI, that it was a leukodystrophy. I, I'm a nurse, and I still had never heard of it, and I, I didn't know what to think. And so as soon as I hung up, he at that point said he didn't know what type, but um, I researched. <laughs> and you know, discovered that it was awful and it was a terminal and most of the time there was different types, the different outcomes, but most of them were terminal. And uh, this particular type when we researched it was normally within two years the child had passed. The only option if he was suitable was a bone marrow transplant. So he discussed, um, he discussed that, um, a little bit of what that entailed. He said he would refer us to um, Dr. Mullen Dr. Craig Mullen at Strong um, to discuss it, but he also said it might be worth um, going to Minnesota, to Children's uh, University of Minnesota, um, where they are experts in ALD. Knowing the hospital and knowing the physicians, I felt very comfortable staying here. He we needed to find a match, and because he has four sisters, that was the best chance. So we had all of them tested. Um, two of them came up as matches, the oldest, Amanda, and the youngest, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca at the time was only, um, I think, two. And so, you know, we spoke with Amanda too, but we decided that it would make more sense to, to um, have Amanda be the donor. And she agreed to that. They're great together. They always were buddies growing up. They're only a year and a half apart. Um, she really has kind of taken him under her wing at times. And <laughs> it's, it's very sweet. So they're, they're great together. They really are. And look at you know what could have happened and and how well it did go. It went extremely well. His transplant was um, it was very successful. He really had no illness. I mean he he had side effects of the medication, but he never he never had a, a fever after discharge. He never had to go back to the hospital, which is very rare. Um, everything just worked very well. The, the marrow took over quickly. So. And he has a very strong immune system now. So apparently, you know, she had a very strong immune system that she shared with him. So it's great. The nurses were wonderful. They were so good, so good to him. Um, he just loved it there. He really did. I mean, he was going through this horrendous thing, and he would smile every time somebody came in the door and said, hey, Connor, how you doing? I'm great, <laughs> even if he'd been sick all night. And he just, you know, he kept his spirits up, and they really helped. The social worker, Mike, was wonderful, and, and all the doctors, it just, uh, it really, for a tough situation, it really, they made it go as seamless as possible. It really was, you know, it really was okay. <laughs>